live. This is the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. Welcome to the post fed edition. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel, turn on alerts. So, you know, when we're going live, or if you're not getting alerts for whatever reason, check either my Twitter or join the gold retriever telegram group. Those guys always get notified. If you like the content, please hit the like button. That matters now more than ever. And commenting on anything you like or if you don't like. Because as you may remember from prior live streams, we address everybody's concerns on this show. All right. Let's welcome Bull Runner first on the stream. Crypto Crypt Crazy is here. Welcome. East Tennessee, Willameter, GF, wrong again. Let's do this. Crypto to cash. Hello, Winter Park, Florida. Okay. Center class got here just in time. Rugby Performance Lab, Daydream, wrong again. ETH, 1250 to 1275. I'm in. Don't miss the hand kept GAN chart if you missed it on my Twitter. Okay. So, what are we going to do today? We're going to talk about the Fed. We're going to talk about how the first move after the Fed is usually wrong. We're going to talk about illiquid conditions in December, particularly in the second half, as I would imagine people go into full holidays mood starting tomorrow. I'm going to go into Goldman's article about commodities and the folly of the selling that's going on in GLDN right now. Normally, I don't lead with that on the stream, but it's NFA on that front, particularly if you consider this Goldman article. And I'm just going to tell you right now, the number one 2023 surprise isn't gold because that shouldn't be a surprise because it's obvious. The 2023 surprise is the flipping, right? Is people losing faith in Bitcoin as the number one cryptocurrency and that being replaced with ETH. So, you know, get out the timestamp. I just said that the flipping is the number one surprise for 2023, right? People are going to have to sell Bitcoin and move into ETH. I'm sure that won't be an easy transition. I was just on a Twitter space, right, where I basically freaked everyone out by saying people may lose faith in Bitcoin. They may, right? What kind of price action that creates, I don't know. Right. But ETH being better than Bitcoin is something that everybody was talking about six months ago, and no one is talking about it now, which is why I came up with it not one hour ago as my number one surprise for 2023. Okay. Driftless crypto from Wisconsin in the house, probably freezing his ass off. Okay. Israel is here. Good to see you. Good to see you as always. Good to see all the regulars. Welcome to the regulars. Welcome to the new people. Subscribe to the channel. Watch the shorts. You get it. Okay. Let's get to it. What do you think about Doge? Actually, that was the first chart I have up. So let's just go to that. Let's just go to, let's go to Doge right now. <laughs> let's just, you know, I got news. We're going to do news. Okay. So here's an eight hour chart of Doge. Here is a fib retracement line. Um, okay. So, oh my God. So here's a fib retracement for the 62% retracement of its recent move up. So once again, Doge is probing below the 62% line at 0.08. All right. So just to be intellectually honest, I prefer things to hold the 62% retracements of whatever they do. It's just cleaner. Now, if Doge does not hold, <clears throat> people may tax loss sell in Doge. I doubt it, but they might. And Elon Musk and Tesla are certainly under attack at the fact that he bought Twitter and opted for free speech. <clears throat> you know, the world is pushing back. The left and related fund managers are selling Tesla with reckless abandon. Let me check where that is right now. So, 
Tesla is out. Tesla's actually up for the day, ironically, because everyone's probably done selling it, but no one is talking about this Doge trade. So if Musk is under attack, if people are selling Tesla, he is going to turn to crypto and the Doge narrative is not investment advice, not a guarantee, obviously, but the Doge narrative has to appear, right? And he might do the Doge narrative in illiquid market conditions. He might come out and say, you know what? Jack, we appreciate you. Uh, thanks for so telling us everything about Bitcoin, but we're not doing Boomer Coin. We're doing Doge. And then if that doesn't work, we're going to do Twitter Coin. And you better look out. Right now, it looks like tax law selling. And the theme of this whole stream is how to take advantage of Fed hysteria. So speaking of hysteria, let's talk about GLDN. Okay, so let me get this straight. Goldman Sachs, I'll show the article. Let's start with the article so we have cred. Goldman Sachs says commodities will gain 43% in 2022 as supply shortages bite. Okay, so they came out yesterday with gold better than Bitcoin as their way of maybe saying, you know, gold, <clears throat> gold is better in tougher times than Bitcoin. Bitcoin's only known positive you know, positive QE style environments. My comment was, okay, you know, maybe that's too negative on Bitcoin. <clears throat> that was my initial thought. Then I was like, well, maybe commodities as a whole and Ethereum can eclipse Bitcoin as an investing and trading narrative. So if Goldman thinks commodities are going to go up 43%, they think it's going to go a lot higher. This has got to be, it's got to be grains, metals, and maybe gasoline after a storm uh, in hurricane season, but that's a long way away. It's it's going to rotate, right? It's it's going to be gold, grains, and then gasoline. The three Gs. Hey, that's going to come to a GLTN newsletter near you, but that's the preview. So with that said, everybody is selling the entry token to a commodities ecosystem where there's going to be a silver-backed coin. Water Futures is already out. They're building gold retriever chain and there's going to be a connection to doge right and everyone's selling it the 62 percent retracement is a dollar 19 and i wish people all the best who are puking this out at a dollar <clears throat> that's kind of aggressive i normally don't talk like that particularly about this but you know i feel the need i feel the need because again goldman sachs just came out and talked about commodities and no one's interested, which leads me to believe that, you know, every time the Fed comes out, the first trade people do is wrong. Seriously. So it's like, okay, Jay Powell comes out <clears throat> and he, he shatters the fantasy that they're going to pivot right now. I didn't think they were going to pivot now. I didn't, right? They talked about 5% funds. They're going to stay on 5% funds until something breaks. Good for them. Right. The US government cannot pay the interest on the debt above four and a half percent. So have fun with five percent, right? Until you get a call from Yellen and says we can't pay our bills. So they weren't going to pivot, they were going to talk tough, and that's kind of their job, right? Their job's to fight inflation. Inflation's still at seven percent. So I understand that they're going to stay on the job, but that eventually creates an issue, right? And what that issue is will probably involve defaults questions about the dollar and massive demand for hard assets. This says nothing about the geopolitical situation. I understand there's an interview with David Letterman and Zelensky on HBO, which I'm going to check out. Patriot, U.S. Patriot missiles are being delivered over there. And you could be talking about the coldest winter on record based on some things I'm seeing about GAN work and weather. So, Commodities, supply shocks, hard assets, Ethereum, not investment advice, come to mind. So let's go to the hand kept chart of Ethereum. And then we'll go to news. Don't go anywhere because the take on the news is the take on crypto and the flippening. <clears throat> 1250 is a key level in ETH. So to be intellectually honest, if 1250 in ETH holds, this will have been an opportunity. Tax law selling in stocks and the shattering of a fantasy of a Fed pivot that shouldn't be there or shouldn't be there now has created an opportunity in ETH, right? It broke out. It came back. It's making a return move. It's intriguing at 1250. If it fails at 1250, 
then it's another failed rally in ETH. And then you have to start thinking about, you know, <clears throat> basically buying later or where downside targets could be. In the meantime, let's try and think positive, right? Let's think about commodities and let's think about statistical work that we did a long time ago at another company where an economist who I respect, who, you know, I hope he's watching this. His first name's David. The guy was unbelievable. And Ethereum does well when metals go up and the dollar goes down. And the case for Ethereum, I just woke up this morning and I'm like, wait a minute, I've been talking about Bitcoin. I should be talking about Ethereum. So hopefully 1250 holds. If 1250 holds with stocks crashing, ETH is making a statement because Powell is going to raise rates until he breaks something. And even he knows what he's doing, right? He knows that something has to break. I just don't think it's crypto. I know that's that's incredible that Binance could blow up tomorrow, that there's all this FUD, and now we're dealing with stocks down. We is in the cryptoverse, 1215 ETH. Let's hope so. Okay, again, Goldman says commodities will gain 43%. Goldman has always believed, I worked there for 12 years, that he with the best research wins. Okay, these guys are trying to get out in front of just about everybody else who will no doubt follow them. Okay. Uh, commodities are going up next year. In my opinion, I am going to get long commodities. I am going to open up an account with interactive brokers. I am going to try to buy things related to grains. I haven't done that yet. Again, it's not investment advice. I'm just telling you what my plan is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously I work at gold retriever, but I'm obviously staying with GLTN because of airdrops of commodities. If you're getting airdrops of commodity instruments as commodities go parabolic or before they go parabolic, I mean, when I came up and saw some of the research about commodities that I'm talking about now, I slept like a baby last night, right? I'm not going to lie. I mean, I had an ungraceful exit from my prior job. I have not slept well. Last night, I slept perfectly. Goldman Sachs to the rescue. Okay. U.S. retail sales fall after hefty gains. Labor market still tight. Okay. So there's definitely, you know, there's, there's a shortage of people. There's no question about that. Uh, I don't know what the Fed is going to do to stop that. Uh, I do know that in January, big tech companies are going to use higher rates as an excuse to lay a lot of people off as white collar workers uh, can possibly be replaced by AI systems that can come online at the end of next year. So other than the flippening, my other call is the emergence of AI. And Jerome Powell has not accounted for that yet, and that will be reflected. And that will be what softens the unemployment situation because yes, there is a shortage of $10 an hour workers, but there may be a glut of people making 200,000 a year who are gonna get laid off sadly Okay, sadly, from these big companies because the big companies are having trouble growing. And as Fed, as the Fed hikes rates, inevitably there are going to be problems with some corporate debt. So you'll have technology people downsizing and you'll have some sort of corporate debt default. If I'm talking about a lot of things all at once, doing rapid fire, Google Ray Dalio and Bridgewater, and you should see what they think about the future of interest rates and about coming problems with defaults. The way I will say it for a crypto audience is, I don't care what the dollar is doing now, the dollar is going lower because US government finances are going to be a problem. Okay, Microsoft bans cryptocurrency mining on cloud services. Sort of reminds me of... Uh, Google banning crypto ads uh, after the 2017 crash. So you couldn't advertise anything, even if it was just a research product, which was what sort of did in the company that I worked for at the time. New York banks must seek advanced permission for crypto activity. Regulator says they're afraid that crypto activity is a risk in the banking system that they haven't accounted for yet. Again, the media pretty much obsessed with FUD, right? Of course, we want to protect depositors at commercial banks from a Celsius event, but regulators are going to pick on crypto wherever they can. 
And more importantly, the media is going to pick up on all this negative sentiment, right? You know, like yesterday, Binance was going down. Uh, that has not happened. And I think if ETH takes out 1250, you know, we may have to get real about that rumor or that worry returning, but I'm sick of the FUD. I'm sick of the FUD, especially when Goldman is talking about commodities. Remember, Bitcoin and Ethereum are regulated. The Bitcoin contract, Bitcoin legacy products are regulated by the CFTC. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Bitcoin. I don't think people should pick on it, but the flippening is a theory, and I may stick to that. U.S. Senate, no, I, I, I not may stick to it. I am going to stick to it until proven wrong. U.S. Senators introduce a digital, digital asset anti-money laundering bill. Okay, great. You guys can stop money laundering in crypto all you want. The money laundering in the legacy banking system is exponentially more than it is in crypto. But, you know, if you guys have to introduce something for the sake of introducing something, well, okay, I wish you the best, right? It's FUD, right? It's FUD, right? And if support points hold, if support points hold in big cryptos, that would be good. Or if there's tax law selling and things that people give up on, that's an opportunity, right? People with ugly Christmas sweaters, let, let's, let's go back to, let's just get an intraday chart so the conversation makes sense. So this is a four-hour chart of Bitcoin. So there's support at 17,100. That's good. You know, Bitcoin's probably going to be in a range, but the trade, I think, is gold and Ethereum, as I said, six times already. Okay. Tax law selling December or December as an irrational moment. Let's see if I can pull this up. So let's go to the history of Bitcoin. So now, now, we're, now we're, we're back to doing stuff like totally on the fly. Like I haven't prepared this necessarily. Okay. So December extremes in Bitcoin. Let's see. What do we got? <clears throat> so the December, right. December top in Bitcoin in 2021, right. December 13th. Bitcoin, uh, yeah, November 29th last year, Bitcoin hit a high of 59K and went straight down. So that was another December extreme. Then, of course, over here, you had the situation where you had people wearing ugly Bitcoin Christmas sweaters with the New York Times running an article that said, everyone is getting rich except you. And that was the top in Bitcoin, just like it was the top in the dollar. The top was the week of December 11th, which is where we are right now, right? So whatever people are doing in December is wrong, right? People thought at 60K, Bitcoin was going to 100. That was, that was wrong. And of course, on, you know, the week of December 17th was the low in Bitcoin in 2018. So today is December 15th and everybody is selling and everybody is selling commodity tokens. I wish you all the best. Okay. Basically my attitude is you're wrong. And if I'm wrong about the fact that they're wrong, well, then they can just carry me out. I don't care. <laughs> Right, because I got something behind me. I got the idea. I have Satoshi and Goldman. Who do you got? Who do you got? You know what I'm saying? So I'm challenging the bears. And speaking of bears, <clears throat> you know, I really, I really like this. Okay. So I used to work with this guy, Forrest, right? And uh, he doesn't like a project that I like, but that's okay because that's what makes a market. But Forrest is smart. Okay. He is. And I have a huge amount of respect for this guy. And he says, if crypto makes its way into international oil and commodity deals in any form, he thinks that that is going to result in an explosion in digital cash. Uh, I'm a Zcash guy. I was a Litecoin guy for a long time, right? Uh, Dash I love, but the price action just pushed me out. And basically he thinks that if there's a commodities explosion, that privacy coins and digital cash will go with it. I couldn't agree more. I mean, the two big themes for the, the two not surprise themes for 2023 
is privacy and commodities. The big surprise for next year is the flipping. It's the flipping, right? And you know, if if I'm if I'm willing to show this, it's it's a show of respect for Forrest, and it's it's the idea that I'm not the only one with the idea, right? I'm I'm just not. Okay, okay. So if you want the more raw version, the the you know, if you want like. I don't know, like Bill Noble scares the shit out of people, excuse the third person. It was the GLDN Web3 pit that went on today before the market update where I was just raw AF in terms of how I presented these ideas. Okay, moving into tactical, tactical ideas in crypto. So this is Bitcoin on the four-hour chart. There is support at 17,100. There's probably another, we're out at the mark six. So that means we probably got 12 hours of shitty price action. Okay, let's go to ETH on a four hour. Okay, there's my GAN support level at 1248 showing up on the DeMarc chart. Essentially, you know, it was, you know, that, that euphoria yesterday was the end. So it's like, let's buy Ethereum because the Fed's going to pivot. That's not the reason to buy Ethereum. Okay, now it is an opportunity, which is what the title of this stream is. So that, you know, when people are selling, right, you know, people are selling in December are going away. And this is when you want to show up. I have to come up with some sort of catchphrase where it's like, you know, it was sell in May and go away, right? And, you know, come back maybe in December when Santa's dropping off a gift to you when Ethereum's at 1200 and it should be, it could be a lot higher than that by March. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. I don't mind taking a shot with a stop in this area, right? Let them push everyone out. Let them do the December to remember. Okay. And then we evaluate from there. What is so bad about that? So we have a 90 minute chart of Ethereum. Okay. Right now, 1225 is support. So I'm thinking that the way this might unfold is if you have like equities down 5%, there could be a flash crash lower in ETH that runs the stops below 1250. And my bet is that comes back. Now, if it doesn't, you know, we'll do another live stream and recompute. Okay. Bitcoin on a 90 minute chart. Okay. Again, eh, meh. You know what I'm saying? Like 17,300 is support. This DeMarc work is not very exciting on the 90 minute chart. Now, on the daily ETH chart, sometimes when the count, which is still favorable, it's going in the right direction. It hasn't flipped yet, fingers crossed. So these green one, two, three, that means there could be six, seven, eight, nine on the upside. Typically, you get a dip on the third or fourth count. So let's hope today's the dip or tomorrow's the dip, and then it's resumption on the upside. Five or six more up days. Hopefully the count doesn't reverse. Obviously, we will keep you informed. Okay, Bitcoin on the daily chart, kind of the same thing, right? You know, it's one, two, yesterday was FOMO, rejection, today is follow through. So that's kind of a gross doji star candlestick formation, I'm not going to lie. But what I want to see is I want to see crypto down today, and then I want to see people coming in at least stability later today or tomorrow, right? If we don't get it, then we recompute. All right, let's see what people are saying. Andre Bits is asking, Brits is asking, did VIX bottom? Okay, let's go to VIX. Let's check the bottom. Let's see what happens. VIX up 10% today. Let's put the Bollinger Bands on VIX because that is like the ultimate way to look at VIX. So Bollinger Bands, um, you know, the top Bollinger Band is at 2470. Okay, so VIX is right in the middle of its range and it's swinging back and forth in 10% increments. People are incredibly bearish on stocks, put to call ratios. People have bought so many puts. That's why VIX is so elevated, even though, I don't know, stocks relative to its high, you know, like there's this big, ugly downtrend in stocks. 
I get it. You know, S and P is breaking below its bottom Bollinger band today. So, you know, that's pretty extreme in terms of selling. I, I, I don't have the exact numbers, but the last time we saw that, you know, you were two candles away from a bottom back in June. So people are selling equities. There's a trend line. There's tax law selling. I get it. I'm not in love or not in love with equities, but if everybody is buying equities, everyone is selling equities and buying the dollar. Okay. Yes. The dollar did get oversold, but I'm not particularly interested in the, the idea that the dollar is a safe haven anymore. Right. Normally when risk assets go down, everyone buys the dollar. Okay. That's what people are doing today. Right. And you know, the Williams oscillator is near zero. So, you know, this is an intellectually honest live stream, right? So we do TA, we look at the TA and we say, okay, you know, this is what could happen or not happen. So, you know, there could be a big move in the dollar. Okay. Because the Williams oscillator is near zero. And we'll see if this is a retracement of the move down or if people wake up and they go, you know what? The U.S. government can't pay its bills if Jay Powell goes past four and a half percent. That will likely be in Barron's articles, which is when legacy people sit and digest what just happened, especially with the Fed, right? Can the Fed go to 5%? Sure, they can do whatever they want. The question is, what are they going to break? The question is, will they break their own government? Oh, well. Oh. Like we're gold and crypto people, like have at it, bro. Seriously, have at it. So I've I've identified December as an, a, a month for extreme sentiment in crypto, right? And I'm also establishing the fact that people may be selling irrationally here. I do find it really interesting that Galaxy Digital is only down 2% today and has been in a very narrow range. Galaxy Digital is a crypto hedge fund run by Mike Novogratz in the past. I have used it as a leading indicator. Okay. Crypto companies have had so many problems with solvency that I, I, I don't know. I, I, I stopped using it as an indicator because, you know, everybody was connected to FTX contagion. Okay. But I do like the fact that it's down 2%, whereas, you know, like Bitcoin miners, hut mining, you know, they're going through their bottom bull in Japan. Micro strategy is down a lot. There's, there's a prop, there could be a problem in Bitcoin, right? If there is a problem out there, it's the Bitcoin miners. And I can acknowledge that that is a problem, right? I mean, that is, if this market sucks or if there's some kind of selling climax, it's going to be because Bitcoin miners capitulate, right? In other words, the problem isn't necessarily with crypto. The problem could be with Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin could go down and then Ethereum could go up once the Bitcoin move ends, assuming that's the way it works. Okay. That's assuming the way it works. Um, <clears throat> okay. Let me see what other questions we got. Equities is not where the future is going, according to Rung again, and the banks know it. Okay. Bill does ZEC hold. Okay. Let's take a look at ZEC. But let's go to the DeMarc work. Let's not guess. Okay. Pulling up ZEC. Okay, so can Zcash hold it together? Okay, right now, Zcash, after just getting bludgeoned, is actually still green for today. Okay, now, celebrating our performance and things like Litecoin and Zcash have never served you well, but on a weekly basis, a DeMarc 13 bottom has been confirmed, uh, and Zcash is still positive for the week and is going the other way. I'm really okay with Zcash privacy, you know, like one of my colleagues on YouTube or compatriots or whatever you want to say is already saying that digital cash is the way to go. Let's look at Dash for laughs. I really thought this was my 2020 play. It 
didn't work out and I had to stop talking about it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work. So if, if you have Dash being extremely perky after coming off a bottom at 32 and not reversing, this digital cash idea as it's connected to commodities may work, right? So if it's Dash, if it's Zcash, if it's privacy, right? Okay. And again, back over here to GLDN and anything that has a commodities gateway, right? If, if you combine that with privacy, there's always a bull market somewhere, right? Kramer says a lot of things, people make fun of him, but you know, he was telling people to puke crypto, but he is right. There's always a bull market somewhere. The question is, can you find the somewhere? All right. And if Bitcoin can actually just hold it together and become a stable coin, that would be just fine with me. Just fine. Okay. Mr. Moby Dick is in the house from Belgium. Okay. Okay. When Lord Junta is like, when is the much appreciated, the much anticipated bottom? Okay. Well, <clears throat> the much anticipated bottom, my guess would be after today would be in December. Okay. So here's one I did not get right, okay? GDXJ, that's Junior Gold Miners, actually went up and corrected, right? I, I was kind of fading the people who thought there would be a correction. I guess they do gold stocks for a living. But, but GDXJ has taken out a previous fourth wave. So the fourth wave in GDXJ was here. They took the fourth wave out, which is bullish, the top of the previous fourth wave out. Now it's retracing, and we're going to see if that old ceiling where that give up trade started from is now a floor, right? You should be watching something other than S&P today, okay? Driftless Crypto says, can you step back and imagine a few timing scenarios for commodities in 2023 and 2024? Okay, good question. I've got to look up seasonal analysis for gold. Okay. I've also got to look up seasonal analysis for grains. So let's go back over to trading view and like, look, let's just see what we can freestyle because I think the CRB index, okay. Thomson Reuters CRB index right there. So you have to go to all in trading view and type in CRB. And it's the American flag about eight lines down. Okay, so here's CRB. I'm taking out the Bollinger Bands and I'm taking this Bollinger Band width thing out. Okay, so here is CRB. Let's go to weekly. Okay, so what you have in CRB is probably a 23% retracement of an overall up move, which if this was a stock and you get a huge up move and then all you get is a 23% retracement, that is a signal that this is going to move higher. Okay. But let's not take my word for it. Let's go to a monthly chart. Okay. So this was May of 2011. Okay, where financial assets, this was the end of the Greece trade. So at the end of this trade where everybody was afraid about Greece, the Fed started to do perma QE, commodities collapsed because all the money went into financial assets. So the market has already reversed a lot of this and it can probably just reverse the rest of it. Okay, now if we go back to CRB, okay, this was the top in 2008. Okay, so I guess when you have a worldwide economic crash, commodities go with it. Okay, that was in May. This top was in May. Okay, this top was in January and this top was in May. So I've got sell in May and go away in CRB. So let me just put CRB monthly. Okay. 
So in this case, there was a rally into May. Let me just draw on the chart. Okay. So there was a rally from 1994, which by the way, was a high interest rate environment to 1997. That was a three-year rally that ended in the, you know, near May and June of 97. Okay. This was an April or May top in 2021. So this is May ish over here. And I think the timing they're asking for is in early sell in May and go away. Okay. And then possibly back later in the year. I think that's the way I would do it. Like just, just, just like freestyle the analysis, right? Okay. Like this was June of 2014. Okay. And people got to ask themselves a very simple question. How can the fed, how can commodities rise as the fed is hiking rates? Like June, 2014 was when the fed threatened twist, which was, you know, buying of short-term bonds, selling of long-term bonds as a way to stop ish QE and commodities just we'll see you. Okay. The feds hiking rates and commodities are rising anyway. So again, you have to ask yourself, when do you do it? Eh, let's try now, right? Goldman saying commodities are 43% higher. Um, most likely their clients are the buyers right here, right? Goldman doesn't trade for its own account anymore, or at least I don't know if they do. I, I don't know. Maybe they stocked up on inventory as the thing went down. I, I, I don't work there anymore. And even when I did, I didn't know these things because I was just an analyst. But the fact of the matter is people are doing BTFD in commodities the way they were doing BTFD in tech stocks all these years. Okay. So Ashton is saying XYO on the chart has cup and handle. I'll definitely take your word for it. Um, let me see if I can get XYO up. Not sure if I got the right X Y O there. I don't think I do. Um, we'll we'll try it. We'll, we'll try it some other way. Let me just go back to gold. Let's put that chart up. This is a four hour chart of gold. Actually, let's put the daily chart up. Okay, so a ferocious return to the neckline. A ferocious return to shake everybody out. Okay, we'll see if gold holds. Gold's going to prove itself in the next couple of days. Pancakes and peanut butter. Welcome. Lord Junta says, I'm baffled why people are selling off 50 basis points from 75 and, you know, and 0 0.1 from 0 0.7. So, right. You know, the Fed acknowledged that they don't have to go as fast. They talk tough. We knew this. I knew that. You knew that. But that's not how the market read it. The market was tied up in some fantasy about an immediate pivot which was never going to happen. And Israel is reminding you to hit the like button and share the stream, right? Share the stream so we can get people on board for gold, Ethereum, the flippening, okay? Zcash, not investment advice, right? What are the themes for 2023? Okay. I gave you my opinion on that. Okay. And we'll see if once they're done with the, oh my God, fed trade, when people come in on Monday and Tuesday, okay. Or, or, you know, there's sort of an illiquid scenario where there are overshoots and flash crashes. Like everybody just goes, oh my God, on Friday or Monday, and then it comes back. So you've got to allow for illiquidity between now and the rest of the year. That said, Smart money, just like with crypto, right? I showed with Bitcoin about those December extremes. Smart money is going to be active, even if things are illiquid in opportunities that they believe in. Ray Dalio talking about corporate debt defaults. Okay. That could have an impact on the dollar. And I just can't believe with what Goldman just said about commodities that I have to pound the table on this idea, particularly since I work for a commodities connected crypto company.
company. Okay. Pat says, good morning, Bill. I still don't understand why ETH isn't pumping with the burn. When do you think ETH will finally start to pump easy when gold and metals start moving, right? When they start trending to the upside, people are going to rediscover ETH. Now, I know they think there's regulatory uncertainty that the SEC is going to declare ETH a security. That was before we knew Gensler was in bed with SBF and his lawyers are going to roll over on Gensler hard. So the day, the answer to your question is when does ETH start to pump is when Gensler has to resign. And even if, even if the SEC just stays on its same anti-crypto trajectory, I'm not a regulatory predictor. Gensler is done. He's done. Right. I mean, it's just the optics on him discussing crypto regulation with FTX in general is enough to be done. And there's all kinds of theories out there as to the personal relationship between Gensler's SBF's parents and SBF. You know, they were all teaching at a college together. Who knows if that's true or not. The fact that they got BitBoy on the air criticizing FTX for cozying up to regulators is enough for Gensler to be done. By the time it's all said and done, and the day that Gensler is done is the day people go, gee, ETH is deflationary, and boom. Now, hopefully, that's not happening from much lower levels. So I want to be balanced. You know, I want to say if there's a problem with Binance, you know, lots of people talking about much lower levels in ETH. I get it. There are other analysts out there that have different views. Okay. Right now, I would just prefer to look at 1250 and see what happens. And keep in mind, that I want to do the trade for the flipping in 2023. But my guess is the near-term catalyst for ETH is the end of Gensler. Okay. Wrong again says that's the fantasy. Maybe. Sure. I mean, again, it's not the end of the SEC and it's definitely not the end, the end of regulatory entities trying to come down on crypto, either in actuality or in ceremony to show that, you know, the nonsense that goes on can't happen again. And that's true, folks. You know, they got to do something about this. You know, you cannot have another FTX. And clearly, the crypto community is incapable of policing itself, given that that stupidity was essentially in plain sight and nobody wanted to look. Honestly, that's the deal with FTX. But that doesn't mean that there can't be a reorganization of politics. I mean, at the midterm elections, Back when George Bush was president, Don Rumsfeld had to resign because of the perception the Iraq war was not going well. So heads had a role at midterms. Heads usually roll at midterms, right? So this idea of them coming after ETH when they already said ETH was not a security, you know, I don't know. I, I just think that perceptions of ETH will change, even if I'm wrong about Gensler, right? If Ethereum becomes the new Bitcoin, maybe that's not going to happen now. But shouldn't we be talking about it now? Isn't that the whole point of like the year in review and looking forward? You know, it, that's that's the idea, right? You know, and if you're wrong, well, you know, crystal ball is crystal ball, right? You change your view, but you know, for the moment, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing my job, which is to give you the best research possible. So that's it for the market update for today. Make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe, shorts, we got hand-driven TA, and Instagram is up and running, crypto.noble, courtesy of my girlfriend. So she has got it up and running, crypto.noble on Instagram for education and insight into all the things I like to do when I'm not live with you guys. So we appreciate you, Crypto Crazy, wrong again, Pat. Bull Runner, right? All, all my good friends, goodbye. We'll see you next time.